Hello everyone, my name is Mark Lundeberg and I'd like to demonstrate OpenSwap to you today. This is a fork of Electron Cash that I've been working on over the last few months. It lets you do a cross cryptocurrency atomic swaps. So we've added a couple of interesting features to the Electron Cash. One of them which is we can open uh, Bitcoin wallets. So you can see here I've uh, prepared a Bitcoin wallet where I've uh, allocated some funds to Alice's address and Bob has uh, no Bitcoin. And I have a Bitcoin Cash wallet here where I've allocated some funds to Bob, but Alice has no Bitcoin Cash. And what I'm going to show you today is an atomic swap where Bob ex exchanges his Bitcoin Cash for Alice's Bitcoins. And normally, of course, this would happen with multiple wallets and multiple people and multiple computers. But just to keep it simple, I'm going to have only two wallets, one Bitcoin wallet and one Bitcoin Cash wallet. All right, for now, let's just focus on the Bitcoin Cash side. Besides the uh, ability to open multiple cryptocurrencies, we've also added the ability to do on-chain messaging. This helps uh, Alice and Bob negotiate their trade before they execute it as an atomic swap. And so one of the core concepts here is that each address forms an identity. So I ha have here Alice's and Bob's communications identities. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up Alice's here. You can see here this is uh, Alice's address and her, uh, more importantly, her public key. And this is Bob's address and public key. And you can see already I've exchanged a couple of messages back and forth be between Alice and Bob. And behind the scenes is what, what's happening here is they're creating transactions on the blockchain with some op return data. And this is encrypted using a shared secret that only Alice and Bob know. So that any time in the future, they can go back and look at their message history, but nobody else is able to decrypt these messages that are on the blockchain. All right, so let's say Alice and Bob want to make a negotiation rather than just chatting to each other like they've been doing so far here. So what, you, so what uh, Alice would do is take uh, Bob's public key, start an offer, to going to him and let's say she has her bitcoins and she wants to sell 0 0.002 of her bitcoins and she's offering Bob a price of 45 bitcoin cash per bitcoin so she goes ahead and sends the offer and immediately both Alice and Bob can see this message so let's say Bob gets this message and he thinks hmm interesting okay well I'd like to buy some Bitcoins, but I don't quite like that price. So I'm going to send a counter offer back. So he goes ahead and edits Alice's offer. And let's say he wants a slightly better deal. So he's going to give her the bit, uh, give her slightly less Bitcoin cash at a, sl at a slightly more favorable rate for him. So he goes ahead and sends his counter offer back to Alice. All right. And very soon, so Alice received his counter offer. And at this point, she can just ignore it or she can give another counter offer. But let's say she decides to accept the offer. And so at this point, now we're getting into the atomic swaps. So once Alice has accepted an offer, behind the scenes, they've actually already exchanged sufficient information to build some smart contracts at these two addresses. And these are the hash locked, time locked uh, type of atomic swap contracts. So I'm just gonna open on Bob's end as well here, his side of the atomic swap. So you can see Bob and Alice have the same addresses involved. So they're both looking at the same uh, information. And the way the atomic swap works is Alice is supposed to make the first move. And in this case, the, the first mover would be the person who accepted the offer. And so what they should do is send their Bitcoins, in this case, to this smart contract address. So let's just open up the Bitcoin wallet and let's spend from Alice's address to this smart contract address. And we're going to send the agreed amount. All right, so how does that look? Looks good. We're sending to this address here. All right, perfect. Sent. 
All right, so now Alice and Bob can both see that Alice has put her funds onto the smart contract address. You can see here that normally uh, Bob should wait until there are sufficient confirmations on this funding before he proceeds. But just to keep this video moving along, I'm going to skip the part where we wait for confirmations. So at this point, uh, Bob could decide to abort the swap by simply not doing anything. And Alice would get back her funds after 11 hours when the time lock expires. But let's say Bob decides to go ahead and uh, complete the deal. So he goes ahead and sends his agreed amount, 0 0.082 Bitcoin Cash, to this address. So let's go do that. So he's sending to this address, 0 0.082. Preview. Just check the address one more time. And send. All right. So now both Bob and Alice have uh, funded their smart contracts. And you can see here what Alice is able to do is redeem these funds from Bob. And the reason she can do that is that both of the smart contracts are locked with a secret that only Alice knows until now. And in order to redeem Bob's funds, she has to reveal the secret. And once she does that, she'll let Bob will be able to uh, redeem his funds. So let's go ahead and redeem Alice's Bitcoin Cash funds. Remember, this is Bitcoin Cash, so we're going to redeem them to this address of Alice's here. And again, normally Alice should wait for confirmations from Bob on uh, the Bitcoin Cash here. But for speed, we're just going to skip that part. She can also decide to abort. This is her final chance uh, by just doing nothing and waiting till the refund time. So Bob would get his refund first, and then Alice would get her refund. So let's just go ahead and redeem that here. So going to Alice's address here. And that's spent. So now Alice has received her uh, Bitcoin Cash on her address uh, with the agreed amount minus some fees. And you can see here now Bob is able to redeem Alice's Bitcoins because when she spent this uh, from this smart contract, she revealed that secret. So now Bob can go ahead and take his Bitcoin address and redeem these funds to that address. All right. And so now Bob has the agreed amount minus some fees again. And that completes the atomic swap. So uh, uh, as you've seen, Alice and Bob did some negotiations on the chain with each other. And as a part of those negotiations, they set up a smart contract and finally they executed the atomic swap. And the great thing about these atomic swaps is uh, anybody can drop out of the swap process at any time. And all that will mean is that people will have to wait till the refund time to get back their money. And the way they would do this is by clicking the refund button here or here. And just as one final feature, I'm just going to close these windows here. There's also a, a sort of decentralized exchange on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. So both Alice and Bob can open this uh, sort of public order book. It's more of an advertising order book where anybody can post an offer to sell or buy Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. And from here, you can actually take any of these offers and begin a negotiation with that uh, party as a private negotiation. All right, I think that wraps it up. So I think today I've shown that, that you can do uh, atomic swaps with this nice uh, graphical user interface. Uh, I think it needs some polishing a little bit to make it a little bit more user friendly, but uh, all the pieces are in place and you can see it works well with uh, making this fully trustless atomic swap. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Uh,